oh, the battery came out. I'm like, wait, it's not working. And so when you turn on the switch, you get one light and then we have a rheostat so we can dim the other light. So this. Hey everybody, Ryan Gronfin with Pilot Rhino. Um, I wanna to talk to you about another EAA Sport Air workshop that I just recently got back from. These classes are fantastic. Uh, EAA, Experimental Aircraft Association, is a phenomenal organization. They run uh, the Air Venture Oshkosh show every year. But really what they are is an incredible organization that supports general aviation and more specifically really supports experimental home-built um, kit type aircraft. But this is the second class I've taken. They offer other classes. I wish I took the sheet metal basics class before I started building. It just didn't work out that way. So by the time I was about six months into it of the build was the next time they offered the course. And I feel like at that point I kind of already had the basics. Now, looking back, I still kind of wish I took that course because what you learn are like the little tips and tricks from people who are so much better at this uh, than most of us are. But last year we did the fiberglass class. Um, I'll put the link. I have a video talking about that. I'll put the link in the comments here if you're interested in that. Great course. And this year, again, we did the uh, avionics kind of wiring course. Um, the instructor, Dick Kohler, Richard Kohler, Incredible man, incredible instructor. I mean, the career this guy had, he flew F-15s, F-18s, F-9s, F-4s, and he had active duty, two different six month, uh, what he calls free vacations, uh, all expense paid trips to Vietnam. Um, and then after kind of his military flying career, he transitioned in to being a liaison between the Navy, and uh, the private contractors. So he sort of took the requirements that the Navy needed and worked with the contractors to make sure that that was working. And he did some incredible projects like getting F-18 manufacturing in Australia up and running. He was the head engineer or the head of that project. Uh, did a lot of stuff in the Philippines that serviced the F-18s all through like the Middle East and Africa and Asia and just, just really incredible man, then became an AMP and et cetera. But point is, uh, if this is sort of magic to you, like it is to me, uh, if looking at a schematic like that is sort of foreign language to you, then this is the class for you. Um, a lot of theory in the class, uh, maybe in a perfect world, I wish this class was divided in two. One would be like for people who are really going to design their own system and do their own avionics from scratch. And then more the people like me who are going to let a professional shop design their entire electrical system and get a lot of the parts started. And then we'll finish it up. It's a great course because now I understand or at least have a high enough level of understanding what diodes are, what relays are, why we need big fat wires running off the battery to the starter, but then after the starter, we don't need wires that are number two gauge, you know, as thick as your finger. So from demystifying that, why we put diodes in places, why we put starters or relays in places, um, two pole switches, one pole switches, things like that, we got into a lot of theoretical detail on that. But then we also did some really cool projects, which again, when I show them here, it's almost embarrassing because they're so simple. But again, things like a Molex connector that I had to do some Molex on my wings about a year ago, having never taken this course, I struggled to get the pins crimped perfectly and properly to where I was 100% confident in them. And then, just watching him do it and having him demonstrate, like now I'm like, oh, I used to be afraid of Molex, now no problem at all, right? It sounds stupid, we made one Molex connector, but watching the master do it and then you doing it yourself makes a huge difference. We did crimping again, 
Sounds so simple, right? All we did was crimp a, a butt or a butt connector and a splice, but watching the master do it and showing you what the different parts of the crimper line up with indentions on things that there are indentions on your butt splice that you line up in the crimper and how to use the crimper properly. Priceless. Again, I understand. You look at this, you're like, ah, no big deal. But I can tell you, I am 100% confident in doing these now, whereas before I was like, I think it's good. I think it's right. Then we made a slightly bigger wiring harness. Again, sort of going down the same road. We did a pigtail, like a D-sub pigtail, where we did some soldering onto microphone jacks. And then we did uh, D-sub pins and we placed them and we pulled them out and we learned how to do that and we learned how to strip four D-subs and how to crimp them properly. And then this was cool. We hooked headsets into it. We plugged it into an audio panel that he had and we tested to see if we got any static or not. We learned when to use shielded wiring, when not to. Let me tell you, shielding wiring, I was af like really afraid of this stuff. And when he showed us how to do it, it's like, now I know how to strip shielded wiring. We did a... Um, RJ45, uh, BNC connector, sorry, on, um, I think this is what, R58 or something. Um, but again, demystified this process, completely demystified it. And man, I mean, this is, this is a factory joint that we did. And then the last project that we did, uh, this was pretty cool. We kind of, he kind of handed us a schematic at the end of the class and gave us a bag with some parts and said, go. And we had to read the schematic and interpret it and set up like a little bus bar. And what we ended up doing was we took our power from the battery, we ran it through a fuse, and then we ran it through a switch. And so, <laughs> oh, the battery came out. I'm like, wait, it's not working. And so when you turn on the switch, you get one light, and then we have a rheostat, so we can dim the other lights. So this is supposed to be a project that's like navigation lights that when you flip the switch are always on and then maybe cabin lights that you can dim. And again, very simple, but just kind of going through the whole process with someone there gives you the confidence. And so it was a, it was a fun class, it was a great class. I wanna thank EAA, uh, Scott Vanderbeen, Mark Force, uh, and uh, Dick, um, Kohler for coming out to McGregor, Texas, putting on this course and putting so much effort and energy into making sure that we are building our airplanes confidently and correctly. I appreciate everything EAA does and I appreciate this class and I could not more highly suggest any of the EAA sport classes and especially the two that I took, the fiberglass class and the electrical wiring uh, avionics workshop. I am almost done with section 29, depending on if you're following my other videos or not. By the time this video goes up, uh, part one and part two of section 29 are up. Part three will be sort of the finishing of section 29, but this is by far the hardest, most in-depth, uh, most complex, uh, biggest section of the build yet. And I think it will be the biggest section of the build um, until the build's done. So uh, keep looking for that uh, here at uh, Pilot Rhino. I feel like I just said the restaurant boss. If I did, that's my work channel. Uh, but this is Pilot Rhino. This is my fun channel. Have an absolutely amazing day. And uh, yeah, I, I look forward to helping anyone out there that needs any help. Feel free to reach out uh, on YouTube and let me know or find me on Facebook, Ryan Gromfin. Um, and we'll chat. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.